Okay, this video uh, is dealing with inverses. Um, let's suppose that we're given two functions and we want to know if the two functions are inverses of each other. So how do we determine that? Well, to show that they're inverses, to show that f and g are inverses of each other, we must show that f circle g of x is equal to x and g circle f of x is equal to x. Okay, that's what we have to show. All right, so let's let's look at the first one. Let's do f circle g of x. So f circle g of x, and you should know how to calculate the composition of two functions uh, if you're at this point. Uh, if not, I have a video. You can uh, search my YouTube channel for composition of functions and watch it. Okay, so f circle g of x, that is equal to f of g of x, which is equal to f of now what's g of x? Well, it's x minus 1 over 7. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to replace the, we're going to put this, whoop, we're going to put this in for x. Okay? We're evaluating f at this value. So that is going to equal 7 times x and in the place of x we put x minus 1 over 7 and then plus 1. And so you can see here the 7's cancel okay, and I'm left with x minus 1 plus 1 and so this gives me x. So I've shown that f circle g of x is equal to x. Now I need to go the other way g circle f of x. Alright, so that is g of f of x, which is g of 7x plus 1. See, see, f of x, f of x is 7x plus 1. And so now I'm going to take this and put it in the place of x in the function g. Okay, So x gets replaced with 7x plus 1 so that's 7x plus 1 minus 1 over 7. And so the 1's go out so that's 7x over 7 and then the 7's cancel and so I'm left with x. So this would be, these would be inverses. These two functions are inverses. Okay, I've got two more examples. I would watch them, uh, watch the, two exa the next two examples. So let's check them out. All right, so same thing. We have to show that f circle g of x is equal to x and g circle f of x is equal to x. So let's do the first one. F circle G of X is equal to F of G of X, which is F of, and what's G of X? Well, it's the cube root of 1 minus X. Okay. So now I'm going to plug this in for X. So that's 1 minus, and in the place of x, I'm going to put the cube root of 1 minus x, and then all of that is cubed. And so that's 1 minus, and remember, when we cube a cube root, we get 1 minus x. Okay, But now, the thing here, remember it's minus this whole thing. So this has to be in parentheses. And then I distribute the negative, and I get x. All right, so now let's go the 
other way with it, we've got to do show G circle F of X is equal to X. So this is G of F of X, which is G of, and what's F of X? It's 1 minus X cubed. So now this, this, we're going to plug in for X. And so this is the cube root of 1 minus, and in the place of X, I'm going to put 1 minus X cubed. And see, it's minus the whole thing, so make sure you put that in parentheses. And so that's the cube root of 1, and then I distribute the negative, minus 1 plus X cubed. And so the 1's go out, that's the cube root of X cubed, which equals X. Okay, so I showed that both equal X, and so these are inverses. Alright, so one more. Alright, let's look at these. So first, let's show that F circle G of X is equal to X. Okay, well, show that it equals X. So that's F of g of x, which is f of square root x minus 4. Okay. So now the square root of x minus 4, I'm going to put in the place of x here in this f function. And so that's the square root x minus 4 squared and then plus 4. And so when I square a square root, that's just x minus 4 plus 4. The 4's go out, and I end up with x. All right, now let's go the other way. G circle f of x is equal to g of f of x, which is g of x squared plus 4. All right. So now we're going to take the x squared plus 4 and put it in for x. So that equals the square root. And in the place of x, I'm going to put x squared plus 4 and then minus 4. And so the 4s go out. I'm left with the square root of x squared. So the square root of x squared, okay, what does this equal? Well, you might think it equals x, but it doesn't, okay? Remember that when we take the square root of something, it has to be positive, okay? And you can see x can be any number, any real number, all right? So to make sure that our answer is positive, remember it equals the absolute value of x, okay? You should have you should have went over this when you did uh, radicals and you were doing radicals with variables in them. Okay, remember if your variable is any real number, then there's a possibility that x could be negative. So if we're taking the square root, we have to make sure we put it in absolute values. So you can see that f circle g equals x, but g circle f does not equal x. So these are not inverses. Okay. Now, one other thing I want to say, uh, not, not so much these functions, okay, but sometimes when you do, when, when you do, uh, got, when you have two functions and you're calculating the inverse, Sometimes you might have functions when you evaluate these, you might get say five as an answer. And then on some other one, and then on and then when you do it the other way, g circle f of x, you may get five also. Okay. Alright, so if if you calculate f circle g of x and g circle f of x and you get say five for both of them, then that means they're not 
inverses. Okay. The property, and I spelt that wrong, but you know what it is, inverses. Okay. It the the the, the rule does not say that they have to equal the same thing. It says they both have to equal x. So be careful with that. Just because you get the same answer for both of them does not mean they're inverses. Okay? You have to get each one has to equal x, not the not just equal the same number. Or you know, say if you calculated and you got uh, 12 for both of them, that would still mean they're not inverses because both of them don't equal x. All right, so I hope that helped. Uh, share the video, give me a like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.